On Point with Craig's Investment Partners. The information provided here is general in nature. It's not financial advice. It doesn't take into account your financial situation, objectives, goals or risk tolerance. All investments are subject to risks and none are guaranteed. So before you make any investment decisions, we recommend you contact an investment advisor. For more information about our services in that regard, you can go to our website, which is craigsip.com. Welcome to On Point. I'm Mark Lister, Investment Director at Craig's Investment Partners, and I'll be talking about a range of topics, including economics, portfolio strategy, investor education, and anything else that's happening out there in financial markets. G'day team. I wanted to talk today about the local reporting season, which wrapped up last week. And while it wasn't terrible, we did see a fairly lacklustre set of releases and company updates from many of our listed companies on the New Zealand Stock Exchange. I think a lot of businesses out there are still doing it tough against the backdrop of a sluggish economy, high interest rates and consumer demand that is still quite low compared to where it could be. And this has all been reflected in the performance of our share market lately. The NZX50 index, which is our headline index, fell 1.1% in February, and that was a month where most of these results were released. And the NZX50 is down slightly in 2024, and it's still about 13, 13.5% below the record high from January 2021, so a little more than three years ago. And that's in stark contrast to world shares, which rallied more than 20% last year. They're up another 5, 5.5% so far this year, and we've seen record highs lately. So... Looking at some of the businesses that did report results or provide updates during February, most of the ones that missed expectations or provided disappointing earnings guidance, they were in sectors that are a bit more sensitive to economic activity. And I think there's a story there in itself. We'll just run through a few of them and then we'll turn our attention to maybe some of those that did a little bit better and what it all means for investors. Michael Hill and KMD Brands. KMD Brands used to be uh, Katmandu. Uh, they changed their name. They own Katmandu. They own Rip Curl. They own a couple of other brands. Those businesses are in the retail space, so they're facing quite obvious challenges. Uh, consumers are obviously tightening their belts, given that we've seen uh, mortgage rates that are at very high levels. The cost of living is very high and people just don't have the same amount of money to spend elsewhere. So those two stocks suffered. KMD Brands uh, during February was down more than 25%. Michael Hill was down more than 18%. The warehouse didn't report a result but it was down 16%. So I think that came on the back of what you heard from some other retailers. And we did get news of Torpedo 7 being sold uh, very cheaply. So I guess the read for it through there is that the, the retail space is doing it tough. Fletcher Building was another company where there was a very high profile result and not in a good way. Uh, a lot of their issues do seem to be quite specific to Fletcher Building. However, there were signs of weakness in some of their other competitors and peers. Uh, Steel and Tube, for example, also involved in that construction uh, business more broadly, and their result wasn't fantastic. So those two companies did see their share prices suffer as well. Fletcher Building saw its share price fall about 9% um, over the month of February, and Steel and Tube held up a, a little bit better, down 3.5%. So it was down, but not nearly as much as Fletcher's was, but still a little bit subdued, hard to get too excited about what we're seeing from those businesses in the here and now. Air New Zealand and Tourism Holdings, they were sold off too. Higher costs, weaker demand. Both of those businesses downgraded their earnings expectations for the upcoming period. So we saw their share prices fall. Tourism Holdings was down about 11%. Air New Zealand was down about 3%. Gallarup, that was another one uh, that said full year profits would be lower than 
they had previously hoped, and that really came on the back of their agricultural division, which seems to be feeling the brunt of destocking from European customers. So Scalarup was down about 7.5% for the month of February. These are all February returns that I'm quoting because the share price performances in February are sort of a good gauge of how the market viewed these results because the vast bulk of them came out during the months of fe month of February. So if we look at how the month was from start to finish for many of these share prices, it is a, a reasonable gauge as to how investors saw these results. Remember the NZX50 overall was down about 1%. So anyone who saw their share price fall by more than that, and some of these are double digits uh, or, or even more than 20% declines in some cases, uh, that is is really an interpretation of the market being quite unhappy about what they saw. Another company that didn't fare well through February was retirement village heavyweight Ryman Healthcare. Ryman slashed its earnings guidance in an update and we saw falling sales of new units and lower margins that they were earning on their existing stock. Now, this is another interesting one. It could actually tell us more about what's happening with Ryman itself. Uh, rather than the sector overall, because some of the indicators we're seeing, uh, some of them are actually looking a little bit better. We've seen a more stable housing market and there are some quite positive trends elsewhere. So that was an interesting one. And also Somerset, which is the other big retirement sector player, they actually produced one of the best results of the reporting season. So that, that's, that's a, a bit of a case study in a sector that's going okay, but you've really got winners and losers. Ryman Healthcare's share price fell almost 19% during the month of February, while Somerset produced quite a good result, and it, it actually saw its share price rise slightly during the month. So uh, an, an interesting um, example of one company that is delivering and one that has made a few missteps and hasn't quite got there. Some of the others that stood out positively, uh, Somerset was one, but other ones that sort of make the list on the other side of the ledger, the good performers, A2 Milk upgraded its revenue guidance following market share gains, and that was quite good because the market overall was a little bit slow. Uh, we also saw improvements in its US business. It's still losing money over there, but it is in a better position than it was. So A2 Milk, still a long way from its glory days back in 2020 that some listeners will recall, but shareholders will be very pleased to th see things getting back on track. The A2 Milk share price rose more than 20% over the month of February. So that is uh, something the shareholders will be very happy to see. Some of the other companies that delivered strong numbers when they released their results were Delegate Group, that's uh, the wine business, Scales, Agribusiness, Sky TV. It's really uh, got its act together over recent years and Sky TV is performing quite well and Auckland Airport. So all of those companies performed well. And then there were some businesses that met expectations in terms of the earnings they released, but their commentary on the future was quite impressive. And the ones that would fit into that group would be Vista Group. Freightways, EBOS Group, and Mercury New Zealand. Uh, Mercury New Zealand used to be called Mighty River Power, so that's an electricity sector company. They were probably one of the stronger businesses in, uh, in that sector for me. Apologies, that's my phone going if you heard that in the background. So look, there's some winners and losers that we can ponder. Uh, certainly, certainly a mixed bag, but I think... Uh, what is clear is that there are some challenges out there and the sluggish economy is definitely weighing on some of these companies. At the same time, a lot of the, the, the bigger, more predictable, more stable businesses actually performed quite well. So I think while you did see some hot, quite high profile misses, I think many investors will have still have seen their portfolio perform okay in February, the New Zealand portfolio that is. Looking ahead, we will see a smaller batch of results released in May. Uh, you'll see a few big names like Fisher & Paykel Healthcare and Main Freight. Those are the two big ones that they'll report in May. The reason these companies are all on a different reporting schedule is because they all have a different financial year end. So all of the ones that we've just seen uh, report results in February have a financial year end that's either June 30 or December 31. So we get their results in February and August. 
and you have a smaller group of companies, it's probably those that are in the minority, have a financial year end of 31 March or September 30. Those are the two sort of six month periods. And those ones with the 31 March year end will report in May. So probably two thirds of the market um, has that uh, June 30 or December 31 year end. So you get them in February and August. And that's the group we've just heard from. The smaller group, it's maybe a third or, or thereabouts of the market will report in May and then it'll be again in November. But another batch in May, and then in August, we'll hear from the same group that I've just run through who essentially reported last month during February. So what will those results look like? I guess something to bear in mind is that the period that these two groups will be reporting on will cover the six months to the end of March 31, uh, which obviously is slightly ahead of us because we're just in the early stages of March now, and then the first six months of this calendar year to June 30. And I guess because of that, most of those results could still look a little subdued. You know, a lot of the things that have been pressuring the economy, consumers, borrowers, businesses through the second half of last year, which is what these February results covered, they're still the case today. You know, people are still feeling the brunt of those higher mortgage rates. Uh, there's still a lot of uncertainty out there. Cost pressures uh, are still causing consumers to keep the wallets firmly in the pocket and businesses are feeling all of those challenges. So I wouldn't be expecting any fantastic results in May and August. I would be expecting more of the same in terms of some of those challenges that we've been hearing about over the last three, four, five weeks. However, I think there could be some bright spots on the horizon by then. So in the outlook commentaries, you might get some more positive comments by then because while cost pressures are still high at the moment, we're seeing wage growth slow as unemployment drifts a little bit higher, as migration sees a greater pool of workers. So businesses are finding it much easier to find staff, and that's good because that's been a real pressure point over recent years. Uh, full employment, no more workers, uh, and wage growth has gone through the roof, which has fueled broader inflation, and that tide has started to turn. Plus, if financial markets are correct, we will start uh, seeing cuts in interest rates. At the moment, financial markets see the most likely timing for the first cut to the official cash rate to be either August or October. That's different to what the Reserve Bank is saying, but that's what fin financial markets believe. So that, that's not too far away. It's sort of the second half of this year. And once you get that first cut, you will get a few more and interest rates will continue to drift lower. They won't go back to where they were during those COVID lows when we had very, very, very low interest rates, but they will come down from the 15 year highs that we're seeing at the moment. So that would take pressure off borrowers, um, both consumers as well as businesses, because remember a lot of these businesses have debt as well. So the, the higher interest rates mean that they are suffering higher costs if they have debt that they need to service. So I think that's good across the board. And it would also be quite an important catalyst for consumer confidence and investor sentiment. I think you'd see consumers that uh, see a brighter future and in terms of investors, rather than everyone just sitting with their money in term deposits and ignoring other asset classes, you might get people looking a little bit more closely at assets like the New Zealand share market, which would look more enticing when you haven't got those high term deposit rates uh, as an alternative. So that would be a really important turning point, I think, when you do see those interest rates start to come down, both from an economic perspective in terms of activity and so forth, as well as from uh, an investor sentiment perspective. Until then, our listed corporate sector is in pretty good shape, even though we've seen lots of challenges, and those were very evident in the results that we saw last month. You've got a group of businesses that have very strong balance sheets, uh, many of these companies raised capital during the COVID period and a lot of them are still sitting on quite uh, high levels of cash or they don't have any concerns at least about needing to raise more money. They've, they've got strong financial positions. That's always really important during periods of economic uh, weakness or uncertainty or where costs are going up and revenues are coming down. So that margin squeeze that some are seeing 
won't translate into lots of companies needing to raise new capital because they're all in pretty good shape in that regard for the most part. We've also seen the steady dividend payers continue to deliver. Uh, back at the start when I ran through some of the companies that have struggled a little bit and then we looked at some of the ones that have performed a little bit better. There was a whole lot of others that I didn't mention as well but I think what you can say is those that have got defensive, stable, predictable businesses, just steady performers uh, with good cash flows and paying attractive dividends, you know, the, the telcos, the utility companies, the infrastructure businesses, some of our real estate businesses, most of those are still in pretty good shape and they have continued to do exactly what investors own them for. So that's encouraging too. And we've seen some bright spots elsewhere, whether it's from uh, companies like Vista or A2 Milk getting back on track or Freightways, uh, which is a company that's quite exposed to the economy, but it's actually delivered some quite good results. So uh, across the board, look, it's certainly not all bad. We've also weathered the worst of the storm, and I think many of these businesses are in a strong position to perform as those headwinds ease. Mm -hmm.